Satan! Why, Satan? Hate and murder! Hate and murder? Remove the curse! Remove the curse. Mr. Bush, you tell me why you're there. Because of the doubts. You face the judgment of God for what you've done to this woman. Oh, God. You face the judgment of God for what you've done to this woman. Just let, just let, it, let, let, it, let it come up. Let it come up. Go, Satan! Go, Satan! Go! 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 It's like I'm finally able to participate in the human race. Angry, hopeless, depressed. You cannot touch me! She belongs to me! I was always, in a sense, treated as an outcast. On the other hand, I always tried my best to be accepted. Oh! But it was never good enough. Demons, the most basic way of explaining how they affect have affected me and how I believe they affect people is like they're bad fuel. From birth, the human race is subjected to all manner of forces, good and bad. According to Christian theology, Protection of life begins with a simple exorcism through baptism. Le persone normalmente nascono buone. È possibile che venga fatto un maleficio a una donna contro il bambino che porta in seno e allora il bambino già nasce posseduto dal demonio senza nessuna colpa, perché non c'è nessuna colpa, ma può nascere già posseduto dal demonio. Ci se ne accorge e con gli esorcismi lo si libera. Father Gabriella Morth is the Vatican's chief exorcist and in 1994 founded the International Association of Exorcists, an organization aimed at strengthening the theological and practical teachings of exorcism. È possibile che una persona assista un'altra con la forza della preghiera e allora io non lo chiamo esorcismo, ma lo chiamo preghiera di liberazione. Preghiera di liberazione che tutti possono fare se credono in Gesù con la forza del nome di Gesù. Perché Gesù ha detto coloro che credono in me, tutti coloro che credono in me, nel mio nome cacceranno i demoni. A priest for 55 years, Father Amorth's call into exorcism came in 1992, under the tutelage of the aging Father Candido Amantin. Father Amorth believes people like Adolf Hitler, and more recently Osama bin Laden, were and are influenced by demonic spirits. With 50,000 exorcisms to his name, his views are not to be discounted. I primi esorcismi li ha fatti Gesù Cristo e gli Apostoli nel Vangelo. Poi, dopo l'ascensione di Gesù, noi leggiamo negli Atti degli Apostoli, nelle lettere di San Paolo, che continuavano a fare esorcismi. E poi tutta la storia della Chiesa è intessuta da esorcismi che sono stati fatti. Sempre in questi duemila anni sono sempre stati fatti esorcismi. Belief in spirits and the work of witch doctors was accepted practice in past centuries. But with today's advances in medicine, psychology, and the understanding of how the human brain works, are we really to believe the devil is still at play? Have you ever been involved in some form of the occult? 
non-Christian pagan religions? Have your ancestors been involved in those kinds of things? There's another clue. Have you ever dabbled in witchcraft, Satanism, black magic, or some form of the occult supernatural? That will open you up to demons. Un esorcismo è una preghiera fatta nel nome di Gesù per cacciare i demoni e la sostanza della preghiera dell'esorcismo è nel nome di Gesù Satana vattene perché Gesù nel Vangelo ci ha lasciato detto Marco capitolo 16 versetto 17 coloro che crederanno in me nel mio nome cacceranno i demoni per cui è la forza del nome di Gesù che dà il potere di cacciare i demoni. When people say the devil made me do it, it's not true, the devil can't make you do anything. God gave you a will, God gave you choice. Satan can't kill anyone. Satan can't molest a child, rape a woman. Satan can't start a war. But if he can possess the body of a human being, <laughs> He can use the hands, the feet, the lips, the voice. And being the devil inside, he can cause the people he possesses and controls to do his dirty work for him. Like Father Amor, Protestant Reverend Bob Larson's pilgrimage is to rid the world of evil, and that means the devil. His fundamental Pentecostal approach to religion has its critics, but Larson is never short of work. Today, he has performed more than 6,000 exorcisms around the world. His teams of like-minded people exalt the travelling roadshow to do what Jesus did. Historically, exorcism was the prerogative of the Catholic Church and its billion-strong followers. Pleasure to meet you. But when hierarchy fought practitioners, exorcism was casus belli. So much so, it led to the religious turf war that exists today between Catholics and Protestants. But when Father Amorth and Reverend Larson met in the Christian religious homeland of Rome recently, there was a sense of the pupil meeting the master, complemented by an undoubted mutual respect for each other's work. This book has cast out many demons. I demoni, sì. Io uso ancora questo. He uses this book himself. I use this book too. Not the same as him, but I, I, I quote from this book. To be with Father Amorth, to receive his blessing, to touch cheeks with him, and to have our hands clasped together. I mean, we're we're building a bridge, we're crossing a gap, a chasm that for hundreds and hundreds of years has existed. I mean, let's face it, the church some hundred years ago would have burned someone like me at the stake. Uh, it wouldn't have been tolerated. Uh, but for, for me to hold a, a ritual Romanum in my hands, for me to stand in the place where he does what I do, and to realize that what's brought us together is the evil of this age and the understanding we have a common God, a common Lord, a common enemy, and a common calling. That is so touching to me. Father Amorth and Reverend Larson are two devil hunters from opposing religions who have set aside their differences to help those in search of redemption and salvation from the devil inside. To find a cure for problems traditional medicine and psychotherapy hasn't been able to remedy. But is it the work of the devil or simply a mindful fantasy? I've tried to kill myself over five, six times. I've been in psych wards. I've had six breakdowns in the last 18 months. And Christ saved my life five weeks ago. He came to me and he's changed my life. 
I didn't have a normal childhood, to say the least. My family members were part of a satanic cult, um, heavily involved in the satanic. As a teenager, Megan conceived to middle-aged men, bore their children and watched them butchered through sacrificial offerings. There was a lot of incest in my family, my brother, myself, my sister. Um, there was physical abuse, I was dragged around the house, I was hit. Why would I live I've had over 28 fucking years. What? I've had over fucking 28 fucking years, it's been fucking fun, why the fuck would I leave it? I've got fucking big plans for her. She's gonna fuck these guys right around, they think there's something fucking real going on, you're a fucking piece of shit. You ain't done fucking shit. You've got no fucking clue. And who are you? <laughs> the multitude. So like, go fuck yourself. Bloodletting, sacrifices, um, sexual um, rituals where children were used to um, rape and, and um, yeah, um, we'd, there'd be men and women standing around dressed up in their costumes and, and raping little children, bloodletting over them, sacrificing animals, or, yeah. is um, Bob's ideal um, plant in the audience. I'm not saying that he did plant her, but I'm saying that these vulnerable, miserable people are, um, you know, going to be drawn into this kind of uh, environment. Clinical psychologist and hypnotherapist Dr Janet Hall believes blind faith masquerading as exorcism is dangerous. They need something to, to basically help them. Um, I believe she's a very psychiatrically disturbed person. Um, it worries me that Bob would use somebody like that because she's making a public humiliation and spectacle of herself. She is so vulnerable, so damaged. You pay Satan. <coughs> You're under the authority of Christ. When he starts yelling and screaming at people, I believe that's one of the most dangerous forms of manipulation of the work that he does. Basically what he's doing is becoming that violent oppressor, dominating that person and purposefully bringing out in them all of that upset and all of that sense of loss of any kind of personal power. That's what he does so well with Megan. I don't hypnotise anybody. <laughs> it's been interesting because some folks in the press have said he hypnotises people. Number one, I don't know how to hypnotise anybody. I've never read a book on hypnotism. I've never studied hypnotism. I don't know how to do it. And if I did, I wouldn't. Because I don't think it's a great idea. I think it short circuits what God would want to do anyway. So I haven't hypnotized anybody, and I'm not going to hypnotize you. Well, Bob's very quick at saying how he's not a hypnotherapist, and, um, and I believe that that's very true on a literal sense, you know, that he doesn't have the credentials, that he hasn't actually studied. However, most of the techniques that he's using are very much grounded, um, ill-founded, as in based on hypnotherapy. Ci si può far aiutare da psicologi, non sempre è necessario. Molte volte un esorcista è sufficiente a capire da solo se c'è un male malefico o un male psichico. Why would Megan become that de demon? Um, and I think that's because one of the hypnotizability uh, trance indicators is what we call literalism. That is when you will believe what's said to you. So somebody who's very vulnerable, very hypnotizable, and who is told that I can see a demon inside can then start to role play and while they're in that trance situation totally believe that they are actually demonized. Dipende dalla reazione che la persona ha. Per esempio, se la persona in certi momenti quando è assalita dal demonio parla lingue sconosciute oppure trova oggetti lontani, oggetti sconosciuti 
oppure se di fronte al sacro si ribella, per esempio non può vedere le immagini sacre, le rompe, se viene benedetto diventa furioso. She doesn't want you. My life has changed directions completely since that experience. Mentally, um, I'm free from negative self-talk and negative chatter in my mind. Um, I feel like just huge bags have been lifted off my shoulders. Um, and I'm really, having, I'm really having an opportunity to get to know myself free from, um, free from darkness and free from negativity. I know that's not the truth. I know that I am capable of doing uh, anything that I want to do. It's like I'm finally able to participate in the human race. Around the world, the media too find the subject matter fascinating. So next up, the devil inside of lust. We are here in the studios. Carl is currently getting perked because he is having an exorcism. But it's not me, it's God, and it's God's power, and it's God who does it. And you see more of God than you see of the devil. I'm not the power that casts out evil. Where there's a blank spot, demons will take advantage of it. Reverend Larson's commitment to the cause has no boundaries. With a recent visit to the Asia Pacific, drawing huge crowds of believers in multiple venues. Unlike the Catholic Church, which believes all exorcisms conducted should be kept confidential, Reverend Larson ensures the world is aware of his crusade. In New Zealand, he met Jason, who claims to have been abused by his sister at the age of four. My sister was in the bath and she asked me to come and bring her a towel and then yeah, I got her the towel and she was like, oh, you know, touch me and stuff like that. And I was just young and didn't really know what to do. I want that four-year-old young man, little boy Chase, to look at me. The four-year-old. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at Oh, look, I just think it's an extreme jump from the thought of child molestation to the fact that, that a demon got into a person when that happened. Uh, it's just beyond what I think is a basic intellect, you know. I'm so sorry, little Jason. <coughs> I know it frightened you, confused you, and hurt you. I don't know why she did it, little Jason. And I know you're very angry with her. While it was happening, I was kind of like, what the hell am I doing, more or less? Um, particularly when he asked the demon to face him and think he asked to challenge him or something. I just felt like... Well, I wanted to bite him or hit him, but I couldn't move my arms. for a reason, and that reason is God and what God says and what the Bible says. And if God says something is wrong, let's just cut through it right up front and let's lay the cards out on the table. This is who we are. This is what we're all about. And if you want help, there is a moral price to pay for getting that help and everybody needs to know it. You can't come to God in your terms and pick and choose the way that you'll get help. You come on his terms, and that's one of his terms. And so I laid that out very plainly right in the beginning. The cigarettes, oh no, that's gonna be pretty hard. 
The drinking of pretty much. Like, oh, pretty much got it under control. Jason's partner of two years, Tish, and mother of their newborn child, will be hoping for a life on better terms too. Yeah, I've put up with a lot from Jason. Mm. He's tried to kill me. <laughs> literally? Yeah, literally. <laughs> I smashed a Jim Bam bottle over his head. Oh, what, sorry? A Jim Bam bottle over his head. And that didn't do anything. Um, <laughs> and I smashed a goblet, a really thick glass goblet over his head. That didn't do anything. It didn't even do anything. And then someone smacked him in the head with a fire extinguisher three times. And that didn't really do anything either. He just rolled off and then got back up. <laughs> so uh, I knew that wasn't really him. His eyes had changed. Um, there was no way of getting him off. It was actually me and a friend. The major thing would actually be um, marijuana, because that's something that, you know, I smoke every day. And it's just helped me to keep my head level in the past. And yeah, that's... Because I know they're going to say, you know, you can't smoke blood. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to pretty much, I guess the main thing is I'll just have to talk to God about it, eh? <laughs> As a mental health professional, it's a great concern to me that people may pin on the experience of being labelled as, you know, uh, somebody who's experienced an exorcism, that it's God or Jesus that they have to thank for this breakthrough. Um, to me, that's just another label that basically takes away their own sense of personal power. I call you back to judgment. Go down! Go down! Has Jason been able to forgive his sister? I've released a lot of anger towards her, I guess, a kind of pity her. But... It'll take time. Yeah, yeah. It'll... It'll take time, but I mean, I'm determined to sort it out. I'm kind of disgusted with her. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't judge her for what she's done, really, but I think that she needs to get help as well to sort out her own issues. Um, she's got, you know, two young children of her own, which, I mean, at, I mean, you can't tell me at age 13 you didn't know what you're doing. Um, yeah, so I think that she's still got a lot of issues that she needs to address. I take authority in the name of Jesus, Satan. Reverend Larson's critics say his sin? sometimes aggressive approach to inner healing is nothing sin? more than a modern-day sideshow. You think you're going to hang on to them, don't you? Well, you're not! I get a little aggressive once in a while. It's not an act, it's a real me. My wife says, can't you be a little nicer? I say, no, I can't. I hate the devil. I don't like what he does. We have three precious little girls. But half the people I deal with have been sexually violated. It makes me very angry at the devil. Reverend Larson's closest confidant is his wife, Laura. I question him up one side and down the other. How did you get started? I asked him, how did he get started? How did you know it was God that told him? How do you know a person is honestly in need of deliverance? I mean, I was, I questioned him probably more than anyone has ever questioned him. Because I really wanted to learn about it. I really wanted to know. I didn't want to walk into something that I had no knowledge about and devote my life to something that I, had, I knew nothing about. Despite the support of the Pope, the Vatican too has its own internal critics of exorcism. Senior church circles talk of the spirit of evil rather than the evil spirits. But supporters of exorcism were vindicated in 1999 when the Second Vatican Council updated for the first time since 1614 the right for performing exorcism, known as the exorcism and certain supplications. Il Papa è sempre stato favorevole sia a questo Papa sia a tutti i pontefici perché si pensi che gli esorcismi sono ufficialmente riconosciuti dalla Chiesa da sempre, anzi il 
sacramentale dell'esorcismo è stato istituito dalla Chiesa nel IV secolo. Prima tutti i cristiani potevano fare esorcisti, potevano fare esorcismi. Poi nel IV secolo la Chiesa ha istituito il sacramentale dell'esorcismo riservato ai Vescovi, per cui l'esorcismo è sempre stato presente nelle leggi ecclesiastiche. The fact that some in the religious community didn't support me doesn't surprise me, never surprises me, and it's pretty consistent wherever I go. And whatever the country is, I have to find those people who will flow with me, who will go with me. Because some people in the religious community have inhibitions and theological convictions that don't allow them to accept what I'm doing. So no, it didn't come as a surprise. And even the quarters from which it came didn't surprise me. People who have in the religious community a lot to lose with controversy are not going to want to be associated with something that raises controversy. Fortissime opposizioni perché purtroppo gli esorcismi non si studiano più nei libri di teologia mentre una volta si studiavano e allora vescovi e preti credono sì all'esistenza del demonio ma non credono ai disturbi che il demonio può dare si fa fatica a convincerli di fronte a casi concreti e allora di fronte a casi concreti tornano a credere alla possibilità che il demonio dia questi disturbi. Dove io faccio gli esorcismi? Le persone non violente faccio l'esorcismo seduti sulla poltrona. Le persone violente le faccio stese su questo lettino. Perhaps it's this barren cell-like room and the fact that the Catholic Church halted exorcisms for 300 years, that there's a continued opposition to the right from Father Amorth's peers. Perché si era arrivati a delle esagerazioni quando le persone colpite venivano trattate come streghe e venivano arse sul rogo. Questa è stata una pazzia. E allora come reazione a questa pazzia non si è più fatto niente. Il crocifisso. E io uso il crocifisso con innestata la medaglia di San Benedetto, che è una medaglia tutta con frasi contro il demonio. Questo è un tubo con acqua benedetta. Qui ci sono dei buchi, uno apre e si benedice. Acqua benedetta. A dire il vero, io sono stato non il primo, il primo ad accorgersi di questo è stato un beato, Palau si chiamava, Francesco Palau, che è un carmelitano spagnolo che ha visto la mancanza di esorcisti e è andato due volte dal Papa per chiedere che venissero nominati un maggior numero di esorcisti ma lui ha avuto poco successo. Invece io ho avuto molto successo. Quando ho scritto nel 91 il mio primo libro sugli esorcismi, in Italia ha 20 edizioni ed è tradotto in 14 lingue. Allora si è incominciato a parlare di nuovo degli esorcismi. Both Father Amorth and Reverend Larson believe that Satan is more active in today's world as the global community searches for answers in these troubled times. Ma adesso questa posizione si sta attenuando. Anche i laici, anche loro, sono lenti a, a credere a questa realtà. Direi che un impulso grande all'aumento dei casi che hanno bisogno di esorcismi è stato dato dal calo della fede. Quando cala la fede aumenta la superstizione. La gente non andava più in chiesa o dai sacerdoti, ma ha incominciato ad andare dai cartomanti e dai maghi. E allora questo fatto ha aperto gli occhi. In the time of Rome, the violence, the gore, the bloodletting, the killing of Christians, the evil that surrounded all of that at least was in a place. 
in a city, in a coliseum. Now it's everywhere instantly, all over the world. And so the masses by the billions are being affected by this and it makes my job just that more difficult and that more challenging. Io vedo questo, che il demonio, non essendo riconosciuto, è molto più libero oggi di agire rispetto al passato. Ecco perché oggi sono in grande crescita cartomanti, sedute spiritiche, magia, satanismo, sette sataniche. Sono molti in aumento, quindi è tutta azione del demonio che il demonio fa con tutta libertà approfittando dal fatto, del fatto di non essere riconosciuto. Such is the case of Lisa, born into a family life void of spirituality. Events as a child and teenager turned her to practices broadly described as witchcraft. Oh, when I was five years old, my sister and I were mucking around at the shopping centre and mum had obviously had enough of us. So she drove us home and left us in the backyard while she finished, went back to finish shopping. And while we were playing, I fell off a swing and split my lip open. Um, I was five, my sister was four. So at that point in time, when I got back to that part of me, it was just, I was just terrified. Then at 16, whilst attending a Catholic convent, Lisa experienced the unthinkable. Yeah, when I was 16 years old, I was sexually abused. Um, I didn't feel, I felt very alone in myself and I didn't feel as though I could tell anybody about it. So I didn't. Um, and then a month later, I found out that I was pregnant. So then I had to face it. Um, and it was just horrible. It was probably the most horrible thing that I've ever gone through in my life, especially at that age. Your destiny is to have power and authority over every demon in hell, all the works of the devil, and to be totally victorious through Jesus Christ. It was only when she personally witnessed the devil and God coming head to head through a friend's exorcism that she started to get answers for herself, even if she didn't like what she heard. I mean, I believed in reincarnation. All of a sudden, that didn't exist. I, everything that I'd believed in, all of a sudden was getting blown out of the water. And it was very uncomfortable, <laughs> very uncomfortable. The demons, or bad fuel as Lisa calls it, were suddenly taking over her existence. How he got into me was when I was five years old and fell off the swing and was in that state of trauma. Just the, I suppose the terror within my heart, my soul, it's hard to describe it. That is when he entered and he said, he was saying he replaced my mother's love. Answer me. Answer me. Lisa's exorcism left her feeling much better. She felt as though she'd been cured. But only months down the track, she regressed. People would think I was mental, like I needed to go to an asylum, but I knew it wasn't that. I felt like I had a thousand centipedes crawling around under my skin. It felt like my hair was being pulled. It felt like my legs were being grabbed at. There were lots of physical sensations. Get up. The devil had definitely decided to make itself known in my life. Get up, Lilith. Now you have no more right. It seems regression is not uncommon. Say, I, Lilith. Say it. Oh, ci sono molte ricadute. Liberare una persona dal demonio richiede molti esorcismi, molte volte per anni. Per anni. Per cui alla fine di un esorcismo uno si sente bene, ma dopo qualche giorno torna a risentire i mali e sente il bisogno di nuovi esorcismi. So there's been an ancient curse all the way back to Lilith. Do you know the legend of Lilith? No. Lois was 
the precursor to Jezebel. Before Is there, there was... anything before her? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Alle volte uno riceve un maleficio da un'altra persona, ossia da un mago collegato col demonio riceve un male malefico, è il demonio, è il mago che gli manda dentro un demonio. Altre volte è colpevole lui, si espone all'entrata del demonio facendo pratiche di occultismo, che sono soprattutto magia, sedute spiritiche, sette sataniche. So the power of all witchcraft and sorcery and goddesses is found in the legacy of Lilith, of which Jezebel became the Jewish expression. Get up and face me, say pit. So desperate was Lisa, she contacted Reverend Larson in the United States. At Bob Larson Ministries' expense, Lisa went through a week of healing and exorcism to rid her of all her demons. Say pit, Lilith. Say it. The Lord commands you. Well, because I believe Bob is doing very deep therapy, there is a good chance that uh, if he brings somebody out of uh, uh, an emotional um, deep upset that they've repressed and that they've never shared, uh, then they are welcomed into the folds of the church and given a place where they can belong and where they'll be, be feeling loved and cared about, that that can be very therapeutically um, positive for that person. So where do these exercise demons go? Vanno generalmente tornano nell'inferno, tornano nell'inferno. Qualche volta vagano per il mondo in cerca di un'altra persona. È solo una libertà limitata dalla volontà di Dio. For the first time in my life I feel like I'm alive like I haven't been alive like this before and it's more that I just have peace, hope, love, joy, like the simple things in life. I actually have them in a real way now. Ten months ago I would have said I had them but they weren't like this. The, il Dio ha un grande rispetto della libertà delle sue creature per cui anche il demonio ha la potenza, è un angelo decaduto, era un angelo e conserva tutti i poteri, l'intelligenza e l'abilità degli angeli. Per cui il Signore rispetta anche l'azione del demonio pur controllandola e pur dando i rimedi per poterla combattere. You think saying to do this interview was easy? <laughs> I look at it and I just think if there's even just one other person out there with what I'm saying that they can be helped somehow, then it's worth it. It's the truth. People can judge me, call me mad, think I need attention, think I need to be a guru is what I've been told a lot and I've had to deal with all of that but it's just the truth it's just my life it's just what I've been dealt with and it's just how it is for me. Hi I'm Judith Devera and I'd like to introduce you to the Deja Vu range of skincare products. My aspirations my visions and my personality uh, clashed quite strongly with the uh, the uh, Indian culture, which was um, uh, girls should not be, uh, should be seen but not be heard or shouldn't be seen, you know, should be heard, it was all topsy-turvy, to the point where I was just 
told that um, this wasn't my home, this wasn't where I belonged, and uh, that I would never make it in life uh, because I rebelled against their principles, that I was a good for nothing. And our export but Judith was a girl desperate for approval. During her formative years, in her native Fiji, she was adorned with celebrity status. Her beauty was only exceeded in business, running an extremely successful cosmetics company. Yet still, her life was empty. So you don't miss this opportunity to experience the finest available. Pain. Deep, deep pain. Oh, Judas. By God's grace. By God's grace. Forgive that man. <laughs> One of my mother's brothers molested me. That's all I remember. I know. I don't have a visual memory of it. I believe there was, through God's grace, that he blocked out this uh, memory in my mind. That man was very bad, but you're not bad. You're not a bad, you're a sweet, beautiful little girl. And that uncle was bad, he was a bad man. And you're angry with him, aren't you? Yeah. I don't blame you. You should be angry with him. My mother won't talk to me. My stepfather hates me. It's rejection. He has this absolute belief in his ability to persuade people. He uses his voice extremely well. He will go from a very high, childish, come play with me, enticing the person, you know, to, to feel safe, to a demonic, very deep, and now the devil's right here. So he's using voice, he's using drama. He's telling stories in a way which completely engross you to... It's like saying, come along with me. I want that child to look at me. Jesus will help you to forgive that man for what he did. Mm -hmm. You can't forgive him, but Jesus can help you. See, Jesus mm -hmm. helped me. They need a vehicle to do their so-called dirty bidding. And we allow them, we invite them into our lives in so many ways, which we take for granted in this world. We don't realize how much legal ground we continue to give them. And they affect our lives. And it's written off today as, oh, it's only natural. It's only natural, sweetheart, that you feel that way. I will not let that curse fall on me. I will not let that curse fall on me. Or future generations. Or future generations. Un caro chiaro in cui il demonio si impossessa della persona. In genere uno di colpo si sente con dei disturbi, dei disturbi soprattutto allo stomaco e alla testa, dei mali forti che non riesce a di cui non riesce a liberarsi incomincia a fare le cure mediche e vede che i medici non ottengono nessun risultato. Allora incomincia a pensare che il male possa essere non di natura naturale, ma di natura soprannaturale. E allora incomincia ad andare a farsi benedire da sacerdoti. E se alle benedizioni dei sacerdoti ha delle reazioni, per esempio diventa violento, per esempio si butta per terra, se ha delle reazioni violente, allora vuol dire che ha bisogno di esorcismi. E allora si passa agli esorcismi. Say it. Say it! You want me to torment you? By the authority of God's word, you say I, Jezebel. Say it. I. Jezebel. Jezebel. Bind myself. No. Say, bind myself. Bind myself. To the spirit of insanity. To the spirit of insanity. And schizophrenia. And schizophrenia. And all those under my authority. When he ministered to me, I knew it was the Lord Jesus ministering to me. Because Bob is the vessel that God uses. Say it! And all those under my authority! I 
take a three, four chord from Ecclesiastes 4, I bind you together as one. Let go. Oh! Oh! You, you, oh! No, you don't go till I tell you to go. Oh! Say, we will lift the curse. Say, we lift the curse. Say it. Say, we lift the curse. Say, we lift the curse. Oh! Yes, we lift the curse. Say it. Lift the curse! No. Pets, come out of her. Out. Out. Loosen. Come on, help me out here. Tell this thing where to go. Go. Out. Go. Out. And for Judith, there's no doubting the success of her deliverance from malevolent forces. I'm great. What, what, what was it like to go through that exorcism last night? I'm free. I've been bound since I was five years old. Jesus is real. He's not just Bible. He's real. And every word in the Bible is real. I speak to all of you Australians. If the media is here, pack your bags, go to church, get delivered. I'm free. And Satan, I want you to hear, I'm free. I'm free to work for the Lord Jesus. And I belong to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> After two broken marriages, and with the support of her current partner, Lazar, Judith hopes the healing process will continue within her own family. Oh, we've come a long way since my deliverance. We've come a long way in the sense that my daughter is more comfortable with me. Whereas in the past, she would just resent, reject. My son is very much like me. My daughter takes more like her father. In, in temperament, he is very entrepreneurial, he's very outspoken. But I can see that he is suffering from the same that I am suffering, acceptance. Wondering whether his mother loves him. We're missing one. She's asleep. She's asleep? Yep. The three-year-old's asleep. Reverend Larson's ministry claims the moral high ground in many areas, including sex before marriage, blaspheming. His three children are homeschooled and never see a movie or read a book until mum and dad have seen it first. We are up there, first of all, to support him. Second of all, to show the children what dad's doing and what it means to look across the audience and see maybe a few of those people he's helped or might help and to give them that perspective. Our children are homeschooled for a couple of reasons. Number one, because of our extensive travel schedule, I want my family to be with me as much as possible. If they weren't homeschooled, they would not be able to be with me. Secondly, I think one of the most important aspects of any education is understanding that other people's cultures, beliefs, ideas, societies, and the enrichment of seeing the human family as it is. Our kids get to see that. That's part of their education. And thirdly, we do believe in shielding our children from philosophies and ideas that are contrary to our faith. And by homeschooling, we're able to inculcate those ideals that we believe are appropriate from a moral standpoint. But when it comes to divorce, the shutters are closed. There are a number of issues about which we do not take a stand because it's rather divisive. And divorce is an issue we do not speak to. There are many great social issues to which we do speak because they are critical to the process of spiritual freedom. But divorce is one of those issues that whether you've been divorced or not been divorced does not affect whether or not you can have spiritual freedom or receive an exorcism. I myself have been divorced. And there is some teaching in the religious community that says if you've been divorced, you are disqualified. It's ironic that some of those same people will welcome ex-drug addicts, uh, ex-con. I mean, you could be a criminal, become a Christian, and you're okay. If you're divorced and you become a Christian, 
you're not okay. You're somehow disqualified. <laughs> Could religion be moving into the 21st century? After all, it would have been unthinkable only a few years ago that a senior Catholic priest would side with a Pentecostal Protestant. Just 15 years ago, there were only 20 Catholic Church appointed exorcists in Rome. Now there are more than 300. The Catholic Church is even training a new batch of exorcists at the prestigious Regina Apostolorum University in Rome. Si fanno in queste scuole si fanno lezioni teoriche e pratiche sugli esorcismi. Quindi si parte dai testi biblici che riguardano gli esorcismi gli esorcismi operati da Gesù Cristo e poi i vari formulari che si sono via via formati durante la storia della Chiesa, i formulari per cacciare esorcisti. Reverend Larson's approach is to filter the world with like-minded people to carry on his work. Oh, penso che sarà la Chiesa a continuare questo lavoro perché è un lavoro utile, è un lavoro anzi direi necessario per cui penso che saranno gli uomini di Chiesa a continuarlo. Da notare che in tutti i secoli del passato non c'erano mai state scuole per esorcisti però l'esorcista veniva aiutato da altri sacerdoti che si prendevano così facevano pratica e quando l'esorcista o per età o per malattia non poteva più fare esorcismi c'erano già i sacerdoti preparati a fare gli esorcismi perché la vera scuola dell'esorcismo è assistere ad esorcismi. Luca, I think that there is a big danger in somebody believing that the exorcism is going to help them. Um, I think it's very important that they um, seek help from a religious mentor and from some kind of mental health professional and they should take it very seriously and realise that if they do come out with a, a life-changing transformation, then maybe they then have a responsibility to use that only for the power of good.